Welcome to this week's piece. This is one of the most darling dressers ever. It may have some issues, but that's okay. That's what we do here is deal with issues. So as of right now, that top is giving me pause, but the rest is not in terrible condition. So the finish is all shot but I actually like the finish like this because you can work with it. It has like that alligator skin all over it and not a ton of scratches. And a lot of times when you get that, there are scratches in it. So I was very thankful for that. Um, this drawer did have a crack in it. So I'm just going to do a quick, quick repair on that. For these drawers, usually all you have to do is take out the nail that is in the very back and that holds it in. I'm sliding it out a little bit and then I'll use my wood glue, run it along the seam there and then I can push it back in. And then instead of putting the nail in the exact spot that it was, I'm going to slide it over just a bit and really, really shove that together and that will kind of act as my clamp and this drawer will be good to go. The glue I'm using here is my hide glue. I wouldn't recommend this glue specifically for this type of repair. However, I don't have my yellow wood glue immediately next to me. It's at my shop and I'm just working in the garage right now. So I use this because it's what was there. It'll work just fine, but I would have preferred to use the yellow glue on this repair specifically. And this is just going to be what I do as I'm pulling out all the drawers and getting everything ready. I'm making sure that I don't have any other repairs that I need to do. There were a couple, but they were all just super easy kind of cracks and things. So I'm just going to remove the hardware, fix anything else that I see that needs to be fixed, and get it prepped for paint. Okay, so this thing was stained incredibly dark. I'm guessing to hide some flaws, which there are plenty of, but this top has been through the ringer. And I don't know if I can save it or not, but there's enough veneer on here for me to want to try. My biggest issues here are where the grain has literally split apart from water damage and it's lifted. So putting it back down isn't the issue. It will be trying to fill these things and make them look reasonable once they're filled. And then of course, it's missing some chunks off the edges. Now, I'm not in my shop right now, but I'm pretty sure I have some of this in my shop, but I'm not 100% sure until I get this stripped and figure out what is going on underneath here and see how much of this I can save. And if I can't save this, that it's not worth it at all anyways, and I'll end up just removing it. And typically with these older dressers like this, um, there's usually some pretty good wood underneath here. And as I'm going to be painting the rest of it, it doesn't really matter if this doesn't match the rest of the wood. So there are my thoughts. Okay, other thoughts right now is they had this done dark. It looks like they used a dye stain um, and then some kind of lacquer over the top. And it was so dark because see, they have no veneer over this edge here. So they concealed it with a really, really dark finish. So now if I end up getting to keep this, if I can get it looking decent, I will then have to use paint here 
because I'm not going to do edge banding on this. I just, I don't want to go buy any and I don't want to, I just don't want to do it. So it'll have to get painted and that's fine. I'm just, yeah, I don't know guys. I don't know, but I mean, it could be decent if I can get all that dye stain. I mean, it's just so in there. We'll see. Okay, I'm gonna finish sanding this and see what comes of it. Now I do like my high glue for this repair. It's a really, really thin glue and very, very sticky and it cleans up super easy with just water. So I love it for this kind of stuff. I don't have my syringes on me, but this little spatula will work just fine, shoving the glue underneath any areas that really need it. And then I'm going to press it down and obviously it will get clamped, but this was just a tedious process because there were so many areas that were lifted up. And I mean, it's fine. I could have gone through and taken everything off, but I do think this was the best route to go considering the rest of the wood was just, I mean, it was fine. This was kind of the, one of those situations where it could have gone either way, and I think it would have been happy with the result either way. Now I let that go overnight, removed everything, made sure the veneer was laying down well, and then I'm just going to take in these burn-in wax sticks and I'm going to fill in the splits in the grain so that when I go over with my oxalic acid, the water is not going to then try and seep underneath all of this stuff and loosen everything again. So I'm just kind of using this as a better barrier. I want to make sure all those areas are sealed up and it will also fill in obviously the grain. So it's kind of doing two things here. I didn't want to do the oxalic acid first because I didn't want to cause even more water damage underneath and loosen up any more stuff. So I don't know. I was just kind of picking my battles with this top here. But this is a very tedious process, but kind of fun and satisfying as you're doing it. So if you're into tedious work, this is this is a good fun one to do. Um, if you're not, then you can just use wood filler and scrape it in as you do. But I really like this because again, it was it's waterproof essentially. I mean, you're it's a really high temp wax, so water's not getting under there. And for those who have been following along. I believe the last time I used this product was on the rocking chair where I just did a restore on it. And this little guy, the heating element I thought had gone out or something. And I was like, man, I don't know, but I haven't used it since then. I just replaced the batteries and it worked fine. They it just came with, I'm guessing kind of just cheesier batteries initially. So I threw in some probably energizer and they've, yeah, held strong. So just swap out the batteries if you buy this. I highly recommend it, I it works great, but yeah, the batteries it comes with, not so great. Now I did this on the little corner pieces and I loved it because it could, I could build up layer to layer and have it be uniform and flat everywhere. The only thing I didn't like is that I didn't use two different colors to go with the grain. Um, and I think I would do that next time. The only reason I didn't think I'd need to on this one is because I was going to go in with a dark stain because not everything 
was going to be perfect at the end. And, you know, you can hide a little bit more with, with stains. So I knew I was going to end up doing a walnut. And while walnut's not the darkest stain ever, it is pretty dark and it does cover a multitude of sins. So that's why I thought I'd be safe with just doing the single color on this. But I think in the future I would just do two colors just to make it a little more cohesive with the graining. So here's where you can still see all that staining. I'm almost certain I can't get it all out, but we're gonna try. So I just mixed up some oxalic acid. I'm gonna throw just a couple coats. This is the first coat. I'll do a second coat, see where it's at. And then you just take it off with water. So this top is getting a ton more water on it even after we you know, it had a ton of water damage. We're adding more water. That's why I wanted to make sure I had the wax going in. Just to kind of help protect it. Go in and scuff sand the body, but not too much. Because I don't want to take off all the texture. We're going to add some more texture. I have deep water gray, which is just a really soft, bluey gray color. And then I'm adding just baking soda, nothing crazy. And this is going to add even more texture. And it's going to give like a raised stencil effect without using raised stencil medium. So usually on my raised stencil, they're very, very thick. And I do it with joint compound. And it's really awesome stuff. And I love it. Um, but here, I didn't want to do the thicker, smoother surface that joint compound does. I wanted it to be super textured and not quite so far out from the piece, if that makes sense. Um, so that's why I did it this way. And then I stippled it over the stencil. And then I just took a bit of the extra stuff and again, just kind of stippled it everywhere else, all over the place. With the exception of the center portion, because I knew I was going to be putting a paper there and I didn't want to make it harder to adhere the paper. Now I didn't want the top drawers to feel lonely, so I went ahead and stenciled them too, just to bring in the sides into the front a little bit so they didn't seem so different from the front of the piece. And I'm really glad that I did this step because, it, I don't know, it just makes me happy to see it. I'm sure you guys get that too, like where you have made a choice and you're just so pleased, you're like, okay, that was the right decision. <laughs> Now once I finish with these, I'm going to just paint a white panel down the front to help my decoupage paper stand out more. This dresser is going to be a bleeder and I'm just going to accept that. So knowing that it's going to happen that way, I'm going to take some clear coat. I'm going to go over the entire thing with it and I'm going to say seal it in, but it's not really sealing it in. It's just going to give me kind of a blocker so that you can see here it does a little bit, but not a ton to block it out. And now we're just going back to the top while we're waiting for the clear coat to dry on the base. And here is the, um, this is dark walnut. It's a water-based. And I'm going to do two coats of this. I end up doing two. I don't think I showed two, but I ended up doing two just to make sure it was dark enough. And mostly to get those corners to match in because, like I said, I was being, let's just call it what it is. I was being a little lazy with the corners. So 
I had to make sure that was dark enough to cover the corners. Now to apply my decoupage paper, you can see the clear coat did help a little in stopping bleed through, but you can also still see some coming through. And again, I'm not worried about it because we're going to work with it. So to do these large papers, uh, this one is from Zazzle. It is a very thick tissue paper, so it's very easy to work with. I just do a top strip of my, this is satin poly. It's very thin and I didn't have my chalk mountain with me, but it works also. And so I just did a strip of that and then I will work in sections. Um, I am not one of those perfect decoupage people. I don't mind a few wrinkles in mine. If you want super, super smooth decoupage, you can do a ton of different things. You can do the iron method. You can do the um, cling wrap. You can do that. You can use a brayer. I just, I kind of like it to look lived in and old. So a couple wrinkles don't bother me. I will go in and make sure that there's no big wrinkles on areas that I don't want. Like her face has a few wrinkles and I will go in and clean that up by putting a bit of poly on my finger and massaging those wrinkles out. And you can do that anywhere there are wrinkles. And then a lot of times when you do your brush again, you can actually lay your brush a little more flat and you can press the wrinkles out with that if you are very, very gentle with it. You can't push the tips of your bristles on it. You want to lay it flat and do it that way, but that will also help get wrinkles out. Now, when I say I use my finger dipped in poly, I make sure I already have a top coat of poly on the paper first because you want your finger to slide very easily. If there is any friction at all, you're going to run the risk of ripping your paper and you do not want to do that. So the paper should be wet with your top coat of poly and then your finger should also be dipped in poly and then you can slide it around and kind of adjust the wrinkles that way. Now once my paper is mostly dry, I will go in with a blade and cut all the drawers. I say mostly dry here just because I want it to still be a little bit damp because I'm going to go in with poly again and make sure to seal those edges over and around the drawers. So a lot of times you can wait till it's fully dry and just cut it then and it doesn't matter. But in between the drawers, I like to make sure there's just a little, little tiny bit of moisture in it. Not enough to rip the paper but enough to let the paper kind of still be able to move a little bit. And that way when I add the poly, it will really push it back down and be adhered to the piece.
Okay, so I bring out a lot of colors when I'm trying to blend in a paper. And it's not to say that I'll use all the colors, but I do want to make sure that I have them just in case. And I try and go, this piece is going to be dark. I'm going to do the whole thing in grays. So I know that when those bright colors mix with the grays, it's going to tone them down. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about too. So I know there's greens and blues in this. So it's fine that I pick lighter and brighter greens and blues because I know that when they mix with the grays, it's going to drop their tones quite a bit. So that's why they looked super bright. And when they go on, they're bright, but then they blend in with the grays and it brings them back to the image. And this is just the first coat. All I'm doing here is choosing my colors and making sure that those colors specifically will be able to blend the paper into the piece. Because this is a time now where you can kind of play with things and mess with it and see what's going to work before you hit your second coat. So I'm fine with the bottom and I think that's working well. And now I can just go ahead and give the whole front, it's going to be Iron Gate, which is just a really nice dark charcoal gray. Um, I felt like that was a good base for it. So that's where I'm heading with it. And the whole thing's gonna get that. And then as I'm kind of going around the edge of the papers, I can kind of just blend in the colors to the gray. And again, this part doesn't have to be perfect because it's my first coat. I'm just playing with the colors and making sure that they'll work. So when I hit my second coat, I know what I'm doing, ish. I do wanna point this out. I'm gonna come in a little closer and show you there's so many layers to this, so I'll start with the brown and then kind of go the same direction as what it looks like was gone in the original painting with my brush. And then add in the colors, and it's just layers upon layers upon layers of colors. And I'm not worried about it being perfect. I do go over the paper a little bit to kind of make everything go together and seem a little more cohesive. Since the paper has been sealed in with poly, I can always wipe anything that I put on it off with a damp cloth. It will just come right off because it's already sealed and I'm not worried about it. So that's what I love about this. I can kind of play around with it, get it to something that I like, and then I'm just going to, it's supposed to just kind of fade and blend out into nothing. So that's the goal. It's not going to be perfect, but I want it to be just a nice, instead of seeing a huge square on the front of a dresser. I don't like the way that that looks, but I do like it when it looks like, oh, it belongs there. It's kind of fading out into the rest of the dresser. And also you can see the bleed through on her body there. You can't really see it on the rest of the paper. So I don't think I showed it, but I did actually go in with some skin tones and go over the top of that bleed through and it's fixed in the end. <laughs>
Once I get the outside of the paper done to where I like it, I will go into the inside of the drawers and just paint them up. I don't make them exactly perfect, but I just don't like having them not match at all. So that's just something I always do. And then I'm going to seal the entire thing with satin poly as I always do. And the top, I decided I just wasn't in love with the way that it looked against the rest of the piece. So I took a soft gray and did, oh, it's kind of like dry brushing, but it's very wet. You're just using minimal paint. So it's still leaving these long, smooth strokes where it doesn't skip. Like dry brushing kind of leaves like a skipping, like right there. But then when you get it moist, it will smooth it and just make it look kind of like like beech wood a little bit. Anyways, that's what I was going for. I'm really glad that I did this step because it also helped hide those corners that I wasn't super pleased about. I cannot tell you how much you guys make my day when you send me something. It blows my mind every time. So thank you, Linda. You're incredible. I've been dying to use these poles and I finally found this piece to put them on. I was very excited about it. I'm um, here. I'm just waxing the drawer glides. I do that on all my pieces. I want them to slide smoothly. So I just add a little bit of wax. Sometimes I'll use a brush. In this case, I'm using a cloth. And then I'm out of control. So here in those two cups, I just have a bit of poly and I'm taking my glazing dust from Chalk Mountain. I have so many and I love them all so much. So here I'm just making two different shades. You can, it's like you're a mad scientist when you do these things. They're so much fun, but I'm just mixing up a couple different shades and I'm going to essentially throw them on over the entire dresser because I'm out of control. So I go back and forth between the two different colors. You can't see how, like, it's not a shocking thing. You don't look at it and be like, oh, that's too much. It's just like this subtle, subtle shimmer that you get, and it's lovely. Um, since it's done with poly, you have to keep it very moist if you're going to keep it moving because it does like to dry up really quickly. Um, you can also put these in wax. So that's also an option if you're somebody who prefers to do wax a lot. Um, you can mix the glazing dusts into wax too, and it makes a gilding wax, which is awesome. Um, yeah, so I'm just going back and forth, but you can see when I do that how much it makes the raised stencil stand out. And I feel like I can actually see more of the blended colors onto the sides because I did blend a ton of different colors into the gray, and it was getting a little hard to see. So that helped a lot. And then, of course, I had extra of those, so I went in with a detail brush and did all of these by hand, which took no small amount of time. But that's it. This was the very last step, and I just love this thing. I hope you guys did too. Oh hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades, and we've got our finished piece. Isn't she so lovely? I've had this paper in my stash for I don't know how long. It's been forever, and I've just been too, I don't know, too nervous about putting it on something. So I'm like, who's going to buy a mermaid? And now I'm like, who's not going to buy a mermaid? This thing's awesome. This dresser came to me by way of my husband and his parents. He called me while I was in California, was like, hey, we got your dresser. I'm like, yes. So I had something to work on when I got back and it was just perfect. And so it had kind of that alligator skin finish just because the finish was so old on it. It started doing that weird like crackly stuff that it does. And I didn't want to remove that. And I knew that it wasn't going to be 
like unless I sanded all the way down, did a full strip, did everything that I could do to get everything off, it just, I mean, I wouldn't be able to sell it for the amount of work that would have gone into it. So I'm like, okay, I like to work with pieces when they do stuff like that. And that's why I went for this finish. So of course I gave it the scuff sand and did all the things for prep wise, but I knew that as soon as I hit this with um, my water-based products and everything like that, it was gonna start kind of activating the finish again and doing kind of cool stuff. So what I did to add to that is I went in with, you saw me add the baking soda to the paint. I did that as the base layer and then I did it in like um, the really soft blue for when it peeked through at all, you'd be able to see that and it gave it more texture. So I've got that texture going on, quite a bit of crackling and stuff from the original finish, just all kinds of stuff going on. And then, of course, I had to blend the paper into the piece because that's what I do. But I then went in with all the guilds and gilded all the, just everything. Whatever I saw that I was like, oh, this should be shiny. So that's what I did. So I feel like it's kind of like a grunge glam, if that makes sense. It probably doesn't, but when I see it in real life, it makes me so happy. So I'm very pleased with it. I love this. I think it just gave it more of a, um, instead of just, kind of the plain stencil. Like I love raised stencils because they don't seem so stencily to me. And then once I did it with the gold, I was like, oh, now it looks even more like kind of hand done instead of, you know, the pristine stencil lines that I'm not a huge fan of. So yeah, I just, wow. I love it so much. I hope you guys love it. I hope you learned something like always. And of course, if you leave your comments, I will always respond, always answer any questions that you have. Sometimes it takes me a while. I'm actually heading back down to California again because that's just what I do now. Um, so I'll be down there and you know, sometimes it takes me a hot minute, but I'll get to them, I promise. So thank you guys ever so much. You guys are incredible all the time. You're just the most amazing humans. I just can't tell you how much I'm so grateful for you. And I believe that's it. So I'll see you guys next week.